Halo testing. Halo test. Fluoxy Mesterone. This is a classic oral antibiotic steroid. Classic to the old days. This is my ongoing education for healthcare providers with the drugs and the peds that you're gonna see in your patients even to this day. Although this is not one of the classically used current steroids of the day, and we'll talk about why. It's got a limited use. It's seen as a drug for aggression and strength and recovery. It's not classically used for bodybuilders. Who uses this drug? Boxers, MMA fighters, and powerlifters. They like to use it acutely. We're gonna talk about that. history of this drug goes back to 1956 when it was first described as a halogenated derivative of testosterone thought to be five times greater anabolic and androgenically than methyl testosterone which was one of the first classic oral steroids back in the day brought to market back in the late 50s by Upjohn this was a drug for human use and it was marketed for medical uses for both men and women. Usual state of affairs back then, it was for anti-catabolic states medically for men and women, burns, debilitating states, any debilitated state after surgery. You have to imagine back then, these drugs were not seen as villains. They were seen as amazing agents to help in the armamentarium of physicians to help people, men and women, to recover from any catabolic or debilitated states after surgery. I've had stories of so many patients, these are men now in their late 70s, even 80s, saying that they've actually used this drug, among other drugs like Anavar and Anadrol, prescribed by doctors during that time period in the 70s and 80s. I had a skier tell me that he had a very bad injury of his rotator cuff and shoulder, and after his surgery, he was prescribed this drug, he remembers, for a short period of time to help him recover by the orthopedic surgeon and his primary care doctor. What else was it used for medically? Chronic COPD, malnutrition, and long-term utility against corticosteroid applications, prednisone, people that had rheumatoid arthritis. This is a drug that was used and marketed for that back in that day. Also thought to be used for TRT for men. Also used in women. Abnormal menstrual bleeding called menorrhagia in women. And classically, like other anabolic steroids back in the day, for advanced metastatic breast cancer for women that have breast cancer. Absolutely amazing. Now. I want to bring up an amazing feature. You could, you could see now why you hear the stories of physicians back in the 1970s giving steroids. You can imagine the bodybuilders, like way back when in the 70s in California, on the beaches, and physicians were giving steroids. We're not giving a blessing on the anabolic dock. It's today, we're almost into 2020. It's 2019 today, folks. Steroids are still out there. They've been demonized and pushed down. They're controlled drugs now. We understand why. Back in the 1970s, doctors were not just openly prescribing these drugs, like they were some kind of scumbags and they were cheaters. They were giving because they thought it helped people and it did help people. It helps with muscle. So they helped people, they thought. And then of course, when you see it, when you look backward and you look in that, look in the history, you look backward and you can see they had severe side effects. And that's why in the 1970s, the FDA started to limit all these drugs. But imagine, this came onto the market in the late 50s. So you had into all the 1960s, into the 70s, at least 10 to 15 years of utility medically. It's incredible. And of course it was being used 
by the sports, by the NFL. It was used by powerlifters and bodybuilders back then and boxers. We're going to talk about that. So into the 1970s, the medical history continues. The FDA limited the focus for this to be only for TRT for men. This was actually HRT for men. Postpartum bleeding in women, metastatic breast cancer for women, and postmenopausal osteoporosis for women. Now remember, these were, these were all elderly women that were on this medicine, not for two or three weeks. They were using this medicine for months, maybe even years. I'm asking for any doctors back in the 1970s and 80s, please come forward and contact me confidentially, if you will. Call my office or email me. I'd love to hear some stories because th remember, these were used by tens and thousands of people. Currently, the FDA still allows this medicine. It's for TRT for men, but no one is going to use this for TRT for men. But if you look up in the FDA, it's still there. And breast cancer, metastatic breast cancer for women. But of course, it's not used. Maybe in some countries, in third world countries, where there's really no resources, maybe this is used for women that have breast cancer. Absolutely incredible. The chemistry and structure of this oral anabolic steroid it's testosterone derived. Remember, there's a methyl group, the classic alpha 17 alkylation that makes it resistant to the first pass effect, also brings liver toxicity. The amazing structural independent aspect on the molecular side of this drug is the fluorination, the floral group a floral group of C9 and C3. This is what stabilizes this compound, this testosterone molecule, and it also makes it so anabolic and androgenic. I've talked to biochemists about this. Absolutely incredible. And this is old news, folks. This is 1950s, 1960s. The hydroxyl group in C11 limits the aromatization that we'll talk about of this molecule. So therefore, this is not estrogenic, it's a testosterone compound, but because of those molecular functional groups, it's not estrogenic. So of course, you don't see gynecomastia. Now this is of course used as a sole agent. And it has, I have anecdotes of that it was used as a sole agent. Of course, today and even back then, there's a combination, everyone's using steroid-based compounds is polypharmacy. Testosterone esters, and then you add these onto it. So if you're on a testosterone ester and you have gynecomastia or water weight gain because you're on those drugs, it's very difficult to determine which agent's causing what. And that's incredible. That's the whole science and the bro science, if you will, about these drugs. So because it's not estrogenic and it's very androgenic, it's used for aggression and strength. There's no question about this. You don't need studies on this because it's in the underground. It's been used in the 1970s. There's no water gain. So boxers that are small boxers that need to make weight, fighters and powerlifters that need to make weight, they would use this. Bodybuilders they're really not interested in this drug because it doesn't have the weight gain and that big muscle building properties. And that's for all you guys that have brought that to my attention. I do thank you for that. Very androgenic side effects. This is why it's used. They want it to have potential roid rage. But is it roid rage? Is it? I've heard boxers tell me from the 1970s, you know what, Doc? We, met, we want to make sure, the trainers want to make sure, they only gave this drug to level-headed guys. I've heard that from real professional boxers that boxed in Madison Square Garden in this country back in the 70s. Absolutely, this was used. This was a classic drug. This was the shh. This was used, this drug. All the boxers used this. They did, with or without the testing. Other androgenic side effects. Male pattern balding, obviously. This is very androgenic. Acne and the severe stories I've heard for anabolic steroid induced hypogodadism. 
that shutdown of the hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis. I've heard men using this drug, the boxers, using it for a couple of weeks before the, the, the matches and the boxing, the big championships. And then, of course, they didn't know, stopping the drug after going to severe depressions, massive depressions, you know what happened. They were shut down and they didn't know to go on testosterone and there were no doctors around to help them. Or maybe there were and no one had any science. Now we understand there is severe withdrawal and shutdown and the FDA just years ago placed an on-box warning for testosterone for addiction, abuse, and withdrawal. It comes from right here, the history right here. The side effects and the toxicity and the reason why this drug is not really used in the bodybuilding community, of course it is, but it's limited because of its toxicities. Probably those aggressive side effects. But also the classic one, if you talk to the bro science guys, it's liver toxicity. So doctor, this is an oral anabolic steroid with a classic alpha alkylation, but is it worse on the liver than D-ball, Anadrol, even Anavar? There are no studies on it. I have to be careful. I'm telling you, there's no studies on it. And men and women have used this drug for months, maybe even years at a time. So you just have to wonder really how toxic is it at what doses for what person be very careful and doctors beware of this drug liver toxicity cardiovascular toxicity classic oral anabolic drug interesting it doesn't cause the edema and the bloating so it won't cause classic acute aggressive hypertension with a water weight gain in the intravascular edema doctors you know this but it can cause vasoconstriction. It's going to affect all the arteries, those medial arteries, and vasoconstrict. And on those people that are susceptible, you'll see a spike in blood pressure. No question. And remember, it's never used as a sole agent. This day and age, it's added on to agents. Lipid toxicity. No question it's going to tank the HDL and potentially increase the LDL man per man. LVH over time grows muscle, cardiovascular, left ventricle, not good, can definitely potentially over time with other drugs with susceptibility in men lead to LVH and worse and heart failure and early and diastolic heart failure. Please pay attention, doctors. Get an echocardiogram. Please don't just scare these people and be aggressive and be a hater. Please en encourage them to come in to get off these drugs Use your smarts, doctors, and your technical savvy. Use technology and help these people. Give them an alternative. Hypercoagulable state, myocardial infarction, heart attacks and strokes. This day and age, we have controversy on testosterone itself on TRT doses. Could it cause a heart attack and stroke? Please pay attention. Please take every man as an individual patient and look at those individual risks. Any man that has a family history is going to be at risk of just aging and living. If he takes these drugs, I see it every day. He can get worse. He can have a heart attack. I see it. Walk into my office every day. That's for all you haters and bro science guys who think steroids don't hurt because they definitely do. Life hurts. Getting older hurts. Hypertension, cholesterol, diabetes. Just living can hurt. Be very careful. This is science and also a loving, caring, an aspect of taking care of people that are doing something. Forget the professional athletes who are cheating. These are just people that just want to be stronger and feel better. Be very careful. Do not discriminate on these people. Interesting features and controversies about halo test. So you hear the history, that power lifter, that boxer takes it that morning because they want to be more aggressive and focused. Does it work? Well, let's look at the chemical structure again. The half-life of this drug is actually about 9 to 10 hours, not 30 to 90 minutes. I've checked into this with a biochemist. So does it actually work structurally and chemically? Can it take it and it can be fast-acting within hours in your brain? 
Probably not. It's a great placebo effect. Remember, these men are already aggressive. They're already amped up and pumped up. They're already on steroids. They take a pill, it could be a sugar pill. They, they, they tell me, Doc, I was stronger. I got a personal record. I had the best fight of my life. I had the best match of my life. I had to use it. I felt my rage. Do we really know? It's amazing. But this drug is used for that. The boxers classically have told me, boxing in Madison Square Garden, I've taken anecdotes of many of these men that are now in their 70s and 80s. They used it for about two weeks, maybe a month. Of course, the day of the event, but they used it for a short period and they said, boy, doc, it worked like a charm. They were massively aggressive. But are they aggressive already? Were they just that good already? And did the real top guys, guys like Muhammad Ali, did he use this drug? We don't know. Last piece is the conclusion always. This is a very toxic oral anabolic steroid. Like all the drugs, you have to be careful. I'm asking everyone in the world to be aware and to just educate and to share this information and talk about it because they're not going away. These agents will not go away. They're readily available. Of course, they're all counterfeit and they could be very, very toxic and contaminated. I ask healthcare providers, please, this is an interesting study. Follow me, come under my teaching. We're opening up, expanding my education now for healthcare providers. It's amazing, the interest in the world. There's tens of millions of people on steroids and PEDS, and they're so interested in this. And these are not cheaters and major league athletes. They're just regular guys and women. So please, stay interested, stay humble, and of course, strong and healthy. Thank you so much. I really hope this helps everyone. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.